Every year, a recurring fever hits the southern states of Australia, and for a few days, Melbourne becomes its turbulent centre. International headlines are chased from the front pages, and the city's entire attention is magnetised by the finals of Australian rules football. This film was made in the days that led up to the 1966 finals. The hands-down favourites are Collingwood, one of the oldest clubs in the Victorian League, who have won the championship more often than any other club. Opposing them are St Kilda, who haven't won a championship for 90 years, but who have battled their way to the finals to face the greatest challenge in their club's history. Over 100,000 people have crammed into Melbourne Cricket Club ground where the finals are held. Many have queued for days to get tickets. It's the kind of situation relished by Australians, the underdog challenging the boss. first time running onto this ground uh, uh, with the people that are on the, uh, the um, uh, watching the game uh, you feel as if uh, it goes back to the old Coliseum days I think in Rome and these places where they used to throw the, uh, you out to the lines and this sort of thing and you, you feel as if this is about to happen to you that you're running onto something that looks uh, whilst it's so big the ground is so small, this little green patch, uh, and uh, to run down onto that race and to run into it, it's a feeling, a sensation, all of its own. Well, it's the greatest thrill of your life, just to sort of look around and see these tremendous multitudes of people looking and all glaring at you. And you know, it just looks as though you're, you're in sort of a, a big bull ring, and everyone's ready to pounce on you if you do a mis make a mistake or something like that. Brian Sierakovsky is one of the star players of St Kilda, the Challengers. He's exactly what the fans like their ball players to be. Big, he's six foot two, heavy, he's 13 and a half stone, ruggedly good looking and single. He has 12 brothers and sisters and he studies law at Melbourne University. And this year he's playing in a grand final for the second time. This year's been a big year for Brian and I feel that he'll find his own way now. He's doing well with his exams and he knows what he wants to do and we can't help him really. He's at the university and he has to go along on his own. Well, I'd say this game's a bit tough for me. I was a rugby union player. <laughs> I also had me time at hockey and soccer. But uh, this is a tough man-to-man -man contest and uh, seems to be typically of uh, the Australian spirit. <laughs> Darrell Baldock is the captain of St Kilda. He's married, has a small son and a baby daughter. He comes from Tasmania, of farming stock. He's been playing in Australian rules as a senior since he was 16. Now, in his early 30s, he can look back on a brilliant career. It's brought him from the unassuming world of the small farmer in Tasmania to the social whirl of Australia's second city. Since he joined St Kilda in 1962, the team's fortune has risen. In his first year, he won the club's best player award. But he's not forgotten his background. He works a sheep farm in his spare time. And when he retires, he wants to go back to the land. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, ho, 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 ho. Hey. They got up there, Come on, Come on. Ho, 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 ho! Hey! Come on, ball, let's keep him up! I like to come up here because uh, it uh, gives you a tremendous, um, from a football point of view, relaxation that, uh, uh, especially in the city, uh, right through a football season, that the tension and the pressure that's applied upon you, uh, more so this last week because of the final series and uh, the big match, of course, coming up on Saturday. and. Uh, I find here that uh, uh, the open country, no one virtually knows you and uh, you can certainly relax and really enjoy life. I suppose uh, there's no place like Melbourne, uh, in Australia certainly, that has this fanatical atmosphere uh, to, or approach to a league football match. Some people have described Melbourne's obsession with Australian rules as a religion. It's said to be a cross between Gaelic football and rugger and enthusiasts claim that it's the fastest and most gruelling football game in the world. That's what brings them here, equipped as if for a siege, up to three days before the final, 
to be absolutely certain of a ticket and a good view. You can take about to be dry, though, on Saturday. What do you reckon then? Well, you can take America. They've got Cassius oh. Clay. We've got Bulldogs. Oh, we'll kill him. We'll kill him. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it up. Oh, wonderful. Oh, oh we oh, 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 about ten goals. No oh, doubt about oh, it. Uh, best ball handler the game has ever seen. Uh, and a wonderful captain. Could everyone get in their position, please? If there's any complaints, come and see me. Oh, I've been in the queue for two days. Waiting. I've been waiting ever since I was a 14-year-old. Uh, follow football. I've been here since about half past one yesterday. I think Kilda will win, and I think they win because of their experience and uh, their yeah. good teamwork, everything. Don't worry. I tell you what, we'll pluck every we'll feather off them blasted <laughs> bags. <laughs> every oh, feather off. Feathers, for sure. We'll that won't we'll be in the race. Right. 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 He would be classed as, um, well, say in England, uh, your greatest um, soccer player. Well, uh, Daryl Baldock out here is uh, what we call Mr. Magic. He seems to be able to control the ball like it's on a yo-yo. Uh, the players, um, we play through Daryl Baldock that much because we know he will get the ball. There's nothing, to, <laughs> nothing uh, against it. He's got to get the ball. He's just so phenomenal. He sort of, uh, he, no matter where the ball goes, where he goes, the ball seems to go after him and he just, he just seems to have it on a string. Prizes and awards make a, a season more profitable. This is through the TV and uh, radio stations, and uh, I myself this year. Uh, or over the last 12 months have been fortunate enough to win uh, three cars which have been valued around about the £1,200 mark uh, or $2,400 uh, and a uh, number of uh, newspaper awards which uh, have uh, brought the uh, perhaps the cash awards back to $6,000 which means that uh, to me personally uh, it has made uh, a tremendous year for me. Uh, being a law student I have to uh, think of my studies first and uh, football is, uh, although it's a tremendous uh, interest in my life and uh, one of the key, f key thrills of my life, I, um, I may not be able to p participate in it longer than, say, another two years when my uh, academic studies will be over and I will be then uh, going out uh, with a degree from the university, I hope, and uh, then I may have to give football away, just depending on what firm I get into and uh, whether they like a boy um, playing football with them or or not. Mum's very quiet about it, but she gets, I know personally, she gets very uh, worked up before a game. She just sits and listens to a football match where she won't go to the football. She used to, but she gets too excited. I'm a member of a very big family, um, 13 children, of course. Um, that's besides myself. You know, it's just tremendous to have uh, your mother and father supporting you in the sports you take on. For Darrell Baldock, the days before the big match are nerve-wracking. In 24 hours, he will lead his team onto the field, either to victory, when he'll be the most fated man in the state, or to defeat, when few will want to know him. In moments of stress like these, he gets away to the country to walk the nervousness out of his system. Uh, I have so many different things that I want to do, uh, and I want to do them all at once somehow, uh, and one day I hope that I'll better train horses. Uh, and uh, this I'd love to do, but I'd also like to continue playing football as long as possible. I like to get out in the bay and uh, we'll start off the morning a beautiful day and get out in the bay in our big 42-foot boat and just uh, sit on deck for a couple of hours, 
or, or maybe do some skiing throughout the day. With Melbourne at fever pitch excitement, Brian Sierakovsky and his family take to their yacht to escape the tensions. It's impossible to avoid the contagion of excitement if you stay in the city, where no one talks about anything apart from the match tomorrow, where the newspapers run special editions, and radio and television commentators seem convinced that the world is no bigger than a football ground. The months of training are over, tactics worked out. There's nothing to do now, except, with all Melbourne, await tomorrow. Well, a lot of people think in terms of moving further away from Melbourne, but this is only 13 miles from the city, five miles from my business, and although it's an older area, Mentone, with flat and uh, new development, uh, it's so lovely, as my point of view and the family's point of view, that uh, they can carry me out from here. I haven't really uh, tried to assess my own temperament. Uh, I, I know uh, different things that can upset you. This is where I think the pigeons uh, and my other activities have been a tremendous advantage to me because uh, uh, sometimes with the tension that it is built up, uh, things build up inside you. I sort of let things build up instead of letting off steam. Uh, I sort of build it up and then in this I don't think this is really right. I think it, it is better if you can let it go. I think for myself that uh uh, excitement is overdone. I, I personally don't get as worked up as some supporters I know do. I mean, I do before the game, before I run out into the ground, but I, as far as pre-week, uh, the week before the match goes, uh, some supporters get hysterical and uh, it sort of makes you feel nervous when you look at them and then think you've got to face the big crowd about it, you know. Lost to one of it. Montgomery well out from goals. Comes through again with a long kick. Sending it out towards the half-back flank position. Hutchison was the wing player. Turning on the right foot. But he's tackled very quickly. Loses the run of the ball. In fact, the umpire has given a free kick against him. And it will go to Breen. Number 27 of St Kilda. It was a, the umpire has been knocked out. The goal umpire's last match of the season. Stephen too. He's up on his feet and running around. We don't know what it is yet. He's back on his knees again, the goal umpire. Apparently he got a bad clout this time.
Quite a good game for the children. That point. Oh, one point. That's all we can do. I, I won't realise till tomorrow, how, you know, what a victory we've won. Something that we wanted to achieve for about 80, 90 years now, not us, me personally, but the club, and uh, this is the first time we've been able to do it, and it's something tremendous. It was a, an effort for every boy, just, well, fuel guts, if I may say that.